This is Ask Congress, where we try to bring you some intimate glimpses of the members of the United States Congress and give you an idea of how they think and, and, and where they're about, actually. And today we're very happy to have uh, the very distinguished member of Congress, Tom Petrie of Wisconsin, who is uh, one of the ranking members of the Education and, uh, and uh, Workforce uh, committee. And we're very happy to have you here, Tom. Well, I'm delighted to be on your show, Lester, and I, I've done it before. And yes. uh, uh, you've been, I think you have one of the longest running shows uh, uh, in the world right now. Well, I don't know about that, but anyways, it, mm -hmm. it, it's a long time. I don't even like to mention it because of the fact that people refer to my age. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've been very active uh, recently Mm -hmm. uh, in the whole question of student loans, and that was part of the president's presentation recently. Uh, what do you think of that program on, on, on that he has advanced? Well, I think he's trying to address a real problem, uh, and uh, what he's proposing is to extend uh, uh, the uh, ability of people to, to repay their student loans based on their after-school income to uh, all student loans rather than just those that were uh, just the loans that were made after the legislation allowing for this uh, 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 particular change in the program uh, to pass. Uh, the difficulty is that the program we have right now that he's expanding hasn't been working all that well. Only uh, uh, about uh, 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 one out of 11 uh, pr uh, of the people who are eligible for uh, you, this income contingent repayment mm -hmm. or paying based on a 10 percent of their income uh, actually use the program. Uh, why? Because it's pretty, uh, uh, it's more of sort of bureaucratically centered. Uh, the, you have to uh, uh, fill out a lot of forms and then every t if you change jobs or your pay changes, you've got to change, fill out more forms to mm -hmm. account for it's all that. Cumbersome. So it's cumbersome and, there, and it, it's not as user friendly as it could be. Uh, but it, uh, it's in the we're, it's an area that needs attention from this Congress. I've I've worked on uh, legislation that's similar to what the president's done, but we think is a little more uh, uh, friendly to the customer. And uh, what we do is is patterned after what's already been done in uh, England, Australia, and New Zealand with their student loan programs, and it's worked very very well. In, in, in the, the, uh, so what we propose is what they're already doing, and what they're already doing is uh, uh, when a person uh, graduates and gets a job, they tell their employer they have a student loan. They don't even have to tell the amount of the loan. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after they earn uh, about 150 percent of the poverty level of about fifteen or $16,000 uh, a year, a percentage of their income is withheld and applied to paying off their student loans. So if they earn more, it's paid off faster. If they earn less, it's paid off more slowly. They don't have to fill out paperwork every time the employer changes or the, the uh, uh, amount of their salary changes. It's really pretty se seamless and simple to administer. You and have some legislation in it. We have already. legislation that would provide that. And it's you know basically used by just about every student in those countries. And the other thing is in our, because of the cumbersome nature of our student loan uh, program, the default rate's very high. It's in the neighborhood of 10 to 20 percent of loans are uh, defaulted. In uh, these other countries, default rate is only about 3 percent. So mm -hmm. it's a good deal for the taxpayer. It's a lot simpler for the students. They're able to repay their, their loans on the basis of their ability to to pay. Well, it's really a, a very difficult situation today. It's terrible. Uh, cost of education has gone up faster than people's ability to pay for those increases. You can remember, I, 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 when I went, to, we checked it on uh, one of these Google things, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and what I paid when I went to Harvard College, enrolled in 1958, and I think the cost of uh, tuition at that time. Uh, was fifteen hundred dollars, well, and now it's fifty thousand dollars. I want you to know. Of course, I predated you, but yeah. 
at New York University, when I enrolled, it was $10 a point. Right. And I mean, and, and even at that time, my family found it very difficult to... to uh, but, but you think of it, uh, it used to be that you could, if you worked summers, if you worked while you were in school, part-time or whatever, you could uh, pay a relatively uh, good percentage of your, uh, of your t uh, tuition room and, and board. And it's become harder and harder because yes. of the cost going up. And it's, it's not just universities. Although it's, uh, university costs have gone up even faster than healthcare costs in our in our country, but it's it's areas where it, they're labor intensive. Mm -hmm. uh, that if it can be automated and and so on, uh, it's yeah. cheaper. But labor intensive things have gone up fast uh, faster you, than others. Why do you feel that this is occurring? Where's uh, where, where is the center of the problem? Uh, well, the the. Uh, I think I don't think there's any one one uh, reason. I, if something is b by its nature labor intensive, teaching is uh, by its uh, now there, there's technology coming in mm -hmm. with distance learning and other uh, computer programs ed for which works for certain pieces of mm -hmm. education, and that whole field is starting to adapt. And there will be efficiencies as uh, people can. Take, uh, get the basic uh, stuff, having to memorize by road, or can sit down at a computer and to get some of the basic information or knowledge. But you're still going to have to uh, interact with a uh, another individual who's had experience in order to get the kind of tricks of the trade mm -hmm. or the the uh, uh, put things in a context. Mm -hmm. Which and and uh, uh, so I don't think teaching is ever going to be done only by a by a machine, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, there are pieces of it that can help uh, make it uh, more accessible and more affordable, but we're not there yet right now. We're kind of sort of at the interim where we're almost getting the worst of, of, uh, of both, both worlds in a sense. There was, there was somewhat of a scandal in, in the student loan program, wasn't there, some years back? Well, there have been a number of problems. We, had the, we used to have a, a guarantee program. And that was kind of a cost plus program, and there were a lot of uh, uh, people who were uh, able to to uh, uh, originate loans and get a pretty good subsidy, and but never have to do much in the way of processing or anything, and then turn them over to to uh, uh, people who specialize in collecting collecting them. Mm -hmm. The, the it, it seems uh, really uh, inconsistent with the American dream for a kid getting out of college to be burdened with the idea of, of a loan of, uh, that is, amounts to almost fifty thousand dollars for many many of the students. Well, so yeah, they, they start way back, and, and it's hard to keep up. Right, and you know this all came. It's a, it's been with the best of intentions. I mean, the national goal, which has been broadly subscribed to it was, this is a land of opportunity, and we benefit as a society by having a well-educated citizenry and, and a productive citizenry, and therefore, if, if someone happens to come from a family that does not have the financial resources to support their access to education, the community should try to help so, be, so that uh, uh, you, you're a more productive citizen, and we'll all end up benefiting from that uh, from that a better contribution that you've been able to make. And this came out of the GI Bill, which was a tremendous right. success after World War II. People were all, at, you know, the immediate ex past experience was the Great Depression. War came. Everyone's working because in the war effort, and there, most people thought, well, when the war ends, it may be back to the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that that helped avert that uh, fear probably was that, well, first of all, there had been a lot of deferred consumption. People didn't, couldn't buy cars during the war. They couldn't yeah. put up new houses during the war and so on and so forth. So there was that. But the other thing was that the GI Bill gave people a chance when they came back to, to not just immediately start looking for a job, but to get reoriented, to, to uh, improve their s skills, take a deep breath, and then go out into the 
uh, world as more productive citizens, and it was a tremendous success. And it made a whole, whole new generation, expanded the middle class in America tremendously. Uh, and uh, uh, I think b building on that, people in Congress is before my time, but thought, well, we ought to be hel helping people who now are not, who are yes. coming along who weren't, didn't have to serve or, or didn't have, we didn't have a war for, you know, uh, situation to get access to higher ed education. Uh, but uh, uh, like anything, uh, over time, sometimes these, these start getting barnacles or problems. Uh, we, in a lot of programs, have they call it the third party payer mm -hmm. program, right. where, where the two of us talk to each other and someone <laughs> else pays. Well, we have every incentive to talk a lot. And, and uh, uh, so uh, we, we've been struggling to make sure to keep that commitment to higher education, but to try to figure out how to make it more affordable. The average student loan in the United States is not as large as newspapers would lead you to believe. It's uh, about 20 seven thousand dollars in the uk it's about twenty six thousand dollars you don't hear about a student loan program in the problem in the uk because they have a program that is less bureaucratic and is more attuned to uh, the ability of people to repay when we set it up as i said back uh, when tuition was a lot less and people thought well why not use the way home mortgages work as a uh, uh, framework so student loans uh, you borrow a certain amount and then you have a fixed monthly repayment but your young person coming out of school doesn't have a fixed monthly income right. it starts out very low if they can get a job sometimes they're getting doing internships and so on and working for nothing to gain mm -hmm. experience and they don't have the wherewithal the to, programs to the pay back the the loan so we're, we need to modernize the the student loan program how, how do you feel generally about our educational system in comparison to what's going on in other areas of the world? Well, I think uh, generally uh, the American education s uh, system st still has a lot of strengths. Uh, the fact of the matter is that, uh, not to say it's perfect in any way, not to say it doesn't need to be reformed in many ways. It, we can always make things better and we may have gotten uh, off the off the off center in some areas, but in my district, uh, uh, we see a growing number of young men and women coming over from from China to high school. Yes, uh, all over the country, dozens, and I think they're going to to uh, Japan and other countries as well. Uh, of course, there they have the little emperor situation <laughs> where the one child policy, right. I mean, parents, uh, and as the China has started to become more prosperous. They want to give every opportunity they can to their child. And they want to go to a uh, high school that will get them into a good college. Yeah, that's probably right. And <laughs> But they're thinking, I think they're thinking that uh, uh, getting English language skills, is a big plus in the competitive world, uh, getting exposure to a different culture uh, is probably a, a plus. And then, of course, I think we may not be aware of it, but uh, in a lot of other countries around the world, India, China, and so on, it's a little bit like the little kid with their nose against the window looking at a beautiful <laughs> picture. They, they, they think uh, the United States is still a beautiful, and it is a beautiful city on the, on the hill. And then in Chinese modern history, Sun Yat-sen was kind of the uh, leader of uh, the inspiration for, mm -hmm. mod and he, he was a little boy who his older brother went to work in the in the in the sugarcane fields in Hawaii and sent money back to send his younger kid to yes. Hawaii, and he went to public school in the United States. And I think that makes an impression on the Chinese public to this oh, time. Sure, it's good for the country, yeah. too. I mean, it's a a, a, a sort of cross pollinization uh, of cultures uh, that yeah. is helpful yeah. to us, uh, yeah. uh, like the Fulbright program yeah. was, uh, which was and has yeah. been very successful. Yeah, but at undergraduate, I think we've gotten pretty lax in a, a lot of the more elite schools. There, there, there's no longer grading on the curve, really. Uh, if you give anyone, I'm told by teachers, anything below about an A-minus, 
everyone's in complaining <laughs> and hollering. I mean, it used to be 3% of the kids right. would get an A or A minus, and that would go on down, and it wasn't uncommon that 3% would also get an F. In, uh, the, in the core program, I guess, right. today. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have to cut away from you uh, for just a moment while we bring in our local stations. We'll be back to you right after that.